Hi class, welcome to Fun with Geology. All right, no, seriously, um, the, welcome to geology class. This was not supposed to be online, but um, it has to be now. So I'm going to do my best to teach you some geology, and I hope you're going to do your best to learn some geology. And while we're doing that, we really can have some fun. And uh, before we start our first lesson today, I would uh, like to just introduce myself a little bit. Um, you know, at the family reunion, who we introduce in. We're introducing me! Um, if you want to find out a little bit about me, I have a website. So you can check it out. It's not really that interesting. It's mostly just pictures of places I go and talk about geology. But if you're ever like insomniac at three in the morning and have nothing else to do, check out my website. Look at pretty pictures of places. Uh, so really a little bit about me. Well, that's me. Uh, I am married. Um, that's my husband. This is off in Scotland uh, near where his family lives. I, uh, I don't wear a wedding band because I worked around a lot of heavy machinery at one point in time and you don't want to wear jewelry then because you could lose fingers. So I, uh, I wear the ring of doom around my neck where it belongs, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, we've been married for like uh, almost 20 years now and um, he's also a geologist. Uh, let's see, I got my bachelor's and master's degrees in geology at New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology and did my PhD work at Michigan Technological University. I've taught at Michigan Tech, University of Wisconsin, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and uh, now here, in addition to working for uh, the New Mexico Bureau of Geology, um, some various other projects as an independent consultant, but anyway, so I've done a lot in geology, and now I'm here with you guys to teach you geology and have a good time while doing it. Um, so I don't just like to, you know, play with rocks, right? I don't just look at those. I do have other hobbies. I like cars like this one that's sitting in my garage right now. Uh, that is a uh, 68 Plymouth Roadrunner, which is a lot of fun to drive. I really, really like fishing. So pretty much if I'm, um, you know, not doing work in geology um, or a couple of my other hobbies, you can probably find me out somewhere fishing, especially for big toothy things in lakes, uh, things like uh, pike and musky. Uh, that's what I really like to do. Um, my other hobby, I do write. You can check out some of my books. I write all kinds of different fiction just because it's fun. And uh, I love playing hockey and I love watching hockey. That's a game at Michigan Tech. So I like other sports too. Football's a lot of fun as well. American football. I, I don't actually know much about soccer. Uh, so my advice about this class, um, of course, is, you know, if you do not study, you shall not pass. Uh, so please study hard, um, please ask questions when you have them. Just because we're online doesn't mean that you can't, you know, send me an email and say, hey, Dr. Nat, I didn't understand question 14. Or you can text me, I'll definitely have my, uh, my phone number on, uh, uh, posted on D2L. So you can always text me, you can call me, and uh, ask questions. That's uh, the most important thing if you're not understanding something is don't just sit there and uh, be confused. I'm here to try to uh, help you uh, do your best in this class. So let's talk then, now that you know a little bit about me, um, let's talk a little bit about the science of geology. It is the scientific study of the earth. And there's all kinds of different, like, sub-disciplines within geology. And this is not all of them, but this is some of them. And no, you don't need to memorize this for the test. I just want to show you that there's all kinds of different things that geologists study. And if you decide to uh, major in geology, you might have a semester-long class in every one of these topics. Um, and uh, many of them are absolutely uh, fascinating. We are not going to spend a huge amount of time on all of those, but we'll have a little taste of all of those throughout this semester. 
So why do people study geology? Like, why, why did I study it? Um, well, because it's fun. Uh, and I get to spend a lot of time outside. And occasionally I get to play with explosives and, you know, stuff like that. But really, why do most people study geology? Well, first of all, there's just simply curiosity. You know, look around and you might ask yourself, why does Jotunheim look like that? And why does Texas, well, look like it does? And a lot of that comes down to the geologic history of these different places. And uh, so just simple curiosity of why the Earth looks the way it does and why it behaves the way it does is a good reason to study the science. Of course, there's also natural hazards. Uh, we have natural, the, the earth is trying to kill us every day. I mean, we have floods and we have hurricanes and we have landslides and we have earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. And part of the ge job of a geologist is to understand why those happen and try to forecast or even potentially stop them from happening in order to save lives. And so natural hazards are an important thing. And I just want to point out what it's like once you become a geologist, start looking at the landscape in a different way. This is not a real place. It might look a lot like Jotunheim, but uh, this is Skyrim. I guess I forgot to tell you, I like playing video games too. But anyway, um, in Skyrim, uh, you're like, play this dude here who's a dragon slayer. And uh, anyway, um, this is what happens when you have the brain of a geologist. See, there's a little river down here. And there's a little town right there called Riverwood. And I was standing, first time I was playing this game, I was standing pretty much where that dude was standing. And uh, I actually paused the game and I looked at my husband and I was like, look at that village down there next to the river. Do you think they flood in springtime when all the snow melts? And, well, that's just what geologists think about. We look at the landscape in a different way and start reading things like what are the potential natural hazards of different places. All right, we also care about natural resources because if you simply look around wherever you happen to be sitting right now and uh, look at all the things that are made out of earth materials, you're probably either holding a smartphone or looking at a computer, sitting in your house, and all of those things have minerals in them that make, make them work. Here's a typical house, and it's just showing you some of the uh, earth resources that go into making that house. And some of them might be obvious. For example, like uh, the electrical wiring is copper. Yes, copper is a mineral. But some of them might not be quite as obvious. For example, things like, um, I don't know, uh, da -da -da. Let's see, plumbing fixtures, like your, um, you're going to have copper and zinc going into some of the, uh, some of the like, uh, knobs and faucets and things. Um, the toilet you sit on has um, a lot of clays and feldspars in it. Um, heck, the mortgage, you know, we know paper is made out of um, uh, wood pulp, but some of the binders that hold that wood pulp together are things like clay minerals. And so, in our, in our everyday lives, without even thinking about it, we use earth materials all the time. And so part of what geologists do is look for those earth materials and figure out how to get them out of the ground. But we also, recognizing that we use earth materials, want to make sure that we do this in an environmentally um, conscious way. Right? This, this planet is our home. We don't want our home to be a big disaster zone, right? So while we want to use these materials, we want to use them very uh, in the cleanest possible way. And uh, if there are accidents with pollution being released and things like that, part of the cleanup effort is going to be in the hands of geologists who understand how the Earth works. Um, for example, right here, this is in Leadville, Colorado. Uh, Leadville uh, was actively mined in the late 1800s into the early 1900s. And at that time, there weren't any environmental regulations and people just didn't really think about um, keeping the environment uh, clean and didn't actually often understand some of the, uh, the impacts of their activities. So today we have water like this. Yes, that's water with that weird orange color. Uh, don't stick your finger in that. It's very acidic. The type of 
mineral that they extracted in Leadville, when it uh, reacts with the atmosphere and water, turns to acid. And so there are geologists who work on cleaning up places like this. And so those are some of the reasons why you might study geology. And uh, although I know most of you guys are probably here just because you need a science credit. And that's okay too. I just hope I can get you to understand a little bit about this amazing epic planet that we live on. So a few things to know about science in general, not just geology, is the natural world behaves in very consistent ways according to natural laws. For example, you know, if I take this rock and I let, let it go, it's going to fall because of the gravity, right? And if I did that yesterday, the same thing would happen. If I did it 100 years ago, the same thing would happen. That's one of these natural laws that governs the way the Earth works. And there's many different of these natural laws. And because there's these rules that the universe works by, ideas that scientists have, we can test and we can falsify. So we can have this idea of how something works, we can run some experiments, and we can see if we're wrong about it. It's really a strange thing about science. It's all about trying to prove yourself wrong. Um, and uh, so in any case, that's one of the things we can do in science. And realize science is a methodology. It's a way, it's a method of studying the universe. It's um, not like a bunch of memorized facts. Some people think scientists, they just know a bunch of stuff. Well, yes, we do, but it's not, it's not memorization of facts that's science. It's the process of studying uh, nature that is science. And uh, so this is not a belief system. It's not an encyclopedia of memorizing stuff. It's a way to study and better understand the natural world. So when scientists talk to each other, they do have kind of a different language. It's our own secret language that we use. And some of the words um, mean a, a few different things than in normal conversation. For example, like when you're talking with your friends, you're probably like, oh, that's a crazy theory. But to a scientist, a theory is something that's supported by a whole lot of evidence and it's been repeatedly tested probably hundreds or thousands of times and has never failed a test. So for a scientist, a theory is not some kind of crazy wild ass claim. A theory is something that's, that's right. For us, the crazy ideas are a hypothesis. This is one of those like tentative possible explanations. We don't know if it's right. We don't know if it's wrong. It's a, it's like, well, it's a possibility. So just realize when scientists talk about a theory, they're, they're, they're talking about something that is very certain is actual fact. All right, so let's have a nice overview of our planet that we live on. Um, Earth is a unique changing system. While the laws that govern the way it works don't change, um, many aspects of the Earth do change. For instance, where rivers flow, how high mountains are, um, where sediment is accumulating or eroding, those things can change. It's the rules that govern the way the Earth works that don't change. So it is a changing system, and when we talk about a system, a system is a bunch of different parts that, that work together with each other. And in Earth, um, the four main parts of the system are the geosphere, which is all of the like solid rock, the hydrosphere, which is all of the water, the atmosphere, which is all of the gases, and the biosphere, which, well, anytime you have bio, that's going to be talking about life. That's all the life on the planet. And in a system, a change in any one of these parts can cause changes in others. And uh, I'll give you an example. For um, back when the Himalayan mountains uh, rose up, and um, that's a change in the geosphere, right? A mountain being created. That um, changed the atmospheric composition. It pulled a whole lot of carbon dioxide out of the Earth's atmosphere. So that's a change in the geosphere that caused a change in the atmosphere. And you see that all the time. Changes in any one of those cause changes in the others. 
Now, energy drives changes in the system. And when we look at the Earth, there's two main sources of energy. And one is external energy, and that's mostly from the sun, right? The sun's energy arriving on the planet. This is what drives surface processes like weather patterns. So warm and cold fronts, hurricanes, things like that are affected by the amount of the sun's energy reaching the Earth. Things like volcanic eruptions and earthquakes and plate tectonics, that's driven by the Earth's internal energy, the heat inside the planet. And we'll look, be looking more at that later on in the semester. Um, plate tectonics is what we call a unifying theory. That means it explains a whole bunch of things that happen on our planet. Basically what plate tectonics states is that Earth's outermost surface, called the lithosphere, is broken into pieces, that's the plates, and they slowly move around. And as they slowly move around, they cause all kinds of different things like mountains to form and volcanoes to erupt and sea level changes and all kinds of different stuff. Again, we're going to look into that in a lot more detail later on in the semester. Um, last of the big picture things I want you to remember through the semester is that Earth is old. Earth is 4.567 billion years old, and that's what GA stands for, billion years. Um, giga is uh, the G, and Giga means billion, and A means annum, or years. So Earth is 4.5 billion years old. So a lot of things can happen in those 4.5 billion years. This is a basic geologic time scale. There's 4.5 billion years ago. Here's today. This is to scale, which means if the area, right, this is smaller than this, that means that's less time than this. Now all of these fit into these, and then all of those fit into here. And this last little red line is when humans show up. So humans as a species, Homo sapiens, has not been on Earth for very much of its vast, long, fascinating history. How much time?